because of our slightly kind of wariness about not, you know, not wanting to broach difficult, unpleasant subjects, we are consigning children to an early death. We are, we are guaranteeing they're going to die early. And to me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Well, just because we might get a few nasty tweets. Looking at childhood obesity, because we, we all know that the long-term outcomes for, for kids that are obese are very, very bad. Not only that, the short-term, the attention in school, the lower grades, all these yeah. impacts that their body shape is having on their career potential and their quality of life. Yeah. Feel that as a society, we're in danger of normalizing obesity in adults, and that's trickling down into normal yep. obesity in kids. And, it, and absolutely. It's, so, where the hell do we start there? Because it's a- absolutely. I feel I feel very strongly about this. Very strongly. If you are an underweight child at school, you're referred to the GP. The GP has a panic, and ultimately, you know, social services gets involved. What's happening? You've got social workers calling all over the family. They're trying to work out what's you know what's going on. Is the child not being fed properly? Is there neglect going on? Um, you know, the child is 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 referred on to social uh, to specialist eating disorder services, etc., etc. If you're an overweight child, nothing happens. I don't understand. So, but I mean, surely it's representing the same thing. It manifests itself in very very different ways. But something somewhere has gone very wrong. Because the ch a child ultimately is a child and they cannot take responsibility and you cannot expect them to take responsibility for their nutrition. They're a child. Um, and so therefore, if a child is obese, it is ultimately, it's a, it's a result of, of the parenting. And that is a really unpopular, controversial thing, but I'm unfortunate, I think it's just brutally true. Um, and actually I would see obesity in children as as much as a child neglect issue and child abuse issue as I would underweight children. And that's a huge statement. I think there's an awful lot of people that would, would agree with you. Some on the other side of the fence would be absolutely horrified. And it's whether or not you're right or you're, you're wrong, what's the next step? Because the parents clearly can't suddenly take responsibility on their own because they're, you know, they might be obese, they might not have the money that you know, convenience food is cheap right they, 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 well i would say convenience cheap food is cheap. i mean i think that's a that's a good point it's a very complicated point actually because actually you know all the analysis that's been done is that actually healthy food is cheaper right. so why is it the poorer communities tend to rely more on things like takeaways and unhealthy food actually that's a very complicated answer to that question and it's much more to do with stuff like resource allocate uh, resource availability so actually when you go to very poor communities and i used to work one in, in one down in southeast london and we used to teach a um uh, like a cookery thing and in the end one of the patients explained and said uh, you know you keep on doing this thing with aubergine or whatever <laughs> <laughs> but actually we can't get any fresh food here and i was like that's rubbish of course you can't and i walked out onto the street that evening there was literally not a vegetable on this council estate that you could buy. You walked into the shop. There was there was one small section where the vegetables was, and it was completely empty. In fact, I even took a photograph of it. I was so disbelieving to show the rest of the people back at work. So actually, I think partly it's that they can't access this food. Also, they might not necessarily have the time or the resources in order to cook properly. If you live in a bed seat, it's quite difficult and so on. And they might not have been taught how to do it. But also, if you are very poor, how do you reward your child? If you're wealthy, if you're from a nice middle-class family living up in Islington and you want to reward your child, actually giving them nice organic carrots and so on and so on, that's a way of demonstrating love because you can also take them to Disneyland that weekend yeah. to show them, you know, that's the treat. Whereas actually, if you're really poor, giving them a Mars bar is an affordable way of treating them. You've highlighted giving them a takeaway. Yeah, sorry, you've highlighted just what a minefield it is when you're trying to look for causes and to apportion yeah. pain because... I guess my point was that, that you can't expect the parents to suddenly change off their own back, right? It, it's not yeah. going to happen whether it's not enough knowledge about nutrition or any other factors that we could probably talk about all day, yeah. right? Nuance lies or the, the, the societal reasons lie. My question would be, how do we then fix it? Because we can't rely on the parents because ultimately they're responsible for the situation. Do we rely on the school? And historically schools haven't really got involved unless the, the child is underway. Is there another mechanism that could kick in at this point? How mm. do you need to tackle this when you're looking at classrooms where maybe now the majority of kids would be classified as overweight? It's not yeah. kids in the class anymore. So yeah. With your magic wand I've bestowed upon you, how do we find a solution to this? 
Well, I would say that actually schools traditionally have been involved in their great kids. Because I remember even when I was at school, you know, the, 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 I want to remember where the, the fat kid, and there was always one or two in every class, <coughs> was sent with a letter home saying, actually, you know, what's happening? Right. You know, the school, we had a school nurse. And I think part of the problem is we've now stopped lots of school nurses. The school nurse used to take an active role in actually managing these children. I remember one of the kids at my primary school were, um, had to do like double PE. I mean, he also absolutely hated it. But actually, we were all quite jealous, thinking, oh my God, you get to do double PE. Didn't we see it in a kind of horrible pejorative way at all? We were like, isn't he lucky? Um, and, and, we're, and the parents were brought up to the school and said, actually, what's happening here? You know, we're worried about your child and so on. And actually, that stopped, I think, with the decline in school nurses. And, and I feel that that's been a real loss. And I, but I think now there are still some attempts with schools will weigh children and send us home. And of course, it's inevitably met with this opprobrium from the parents going, like, how dare you call my kid fat? And actually, I think that's what we need to change. And that's what we need to nip to the bud and actually have a bit more confidence and give, children, give teachers a bit like we do what we're trying to do with doctors by using the word fat and the B. Um, and saying, actually, it's okay to confront that. It's okay to say, it. you wouldn't, if, if you're worried about a child being underweight, and somebody came into school and said, how dare you call my kid thin? You would 100% feel in the right and you would robustly defend yourself. And so would everybody around you and so would social services and say, no, 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 this is actually in the best interest of the child. We know that this is an indicator that things aren't going right, the child is underweight, that they're either not being fed properly, not being cared for properly, they're being neglected or abused in some way. It, we know exactly the same for overweight children that it is an indication that something is not going right. But, and in the long term, their health is going to suffer. And we know the vast majority of fat children turn out to be fat adults. And once you become a fat adult, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult to lose weight and go back to a normal, healthy weight. Um, and, and so actually we are consigning to, because of our slightly kind of wariness about not, you know, not wanting to broach difficult, unpleasant subjects, we are consigning children to an early death. We are, we are guaranteeing they're going to die early. And to me, that is absolutely unacceptable. Well, just because we might get a few nasty tweets. I think, I think that's it, though. I think that's where social media comes back into play because authorities or schools are so fearful of a, of a social media backlash and, you know, the woke brigade or the left or the right or who, whichever tribe you're in taking umbrage with your approach. It's, it's easier mm. sometimes, I think, for authorities or schools or any responsible body just to put their head down and, and duck the question. But absolutely. You, when it comes down to we're shortening the lives of, of, of kids, th there should be no conversation that, that, that's out of bounds, right? Everything should be on the table. Yeah, and if you, if you were to say, okay, well, we know, we know that there's some parents that are giving their children a, a cream, they're rubbing a cream onto them that we know is going to limit their life by probably about 20 years. I mean, the, the world would be, they'd be going, what? We've got to stop this. This is mad. You, you know, this is really, and all the excuses, all the reasons behind that, um, we would be going, well, we have to intervene. It's our duty, it's our civic duty to intervene in that. But yet we're seeing exactly the same thing with obesity. And it doesn't mean we would do fat shaming or be unpleasant in any way. We can do it in a kind, caring, compassionate way. And you're right that these, often the parents lack certain resources, be it economic resources, you know, they're, they're harassed, they're very busy, they've got other stuff going on. Um, they don't have the, the necessarily the education to understand what's happening. So we can support those people, but as a society, it just seems to make no sense to me that we would intervene if a child is underweight, but we don't do it if a child is overweight, and yet we know the implications of being over, overweight as a child.